and I was doing exactly what I didn't want to do. I mean, I grew up in a in a home where my dad worked as a laborer. My mom was an at home mom. My grandfather was a very successful entrepreneur. Had retired at 35, had come back into the workplace, had started several companies, had put several mines into production, but had no relationship with family at all. And I remember saying, "Hey, I, I'm not going to do that." We're all about turning a crappy situation into something uh, positive. A quarter million dollars of credit card I debt. I still remember the day when no one turned out. Throw it in the garbage and start from scratch. I could give myself a chance, so I started something. I mean, I think that counts as from poop to gold. <laughs> our sponsor for this episode is our 14-day video script challenge. Yes, we are sponsoring our own show. Yes, we are. <laughs> Welcome back to From Poop to Gold. I'm Benton Crane, your co-host and the CEO of Harmon Brothers. Today, I am joined by Doug Morneau. Welcome to the show, Doug. Hey, thanks, Benton. Super excited to be with you today. Now, Doug is a serial entrepreneur, and he is the host of the podcast Real Marketing Real Fast. I'm excited to get a pick Doug's brain, and uh, he, he's got a lot of... Um, um, a lot of experience and a lot of history to share with our listeners. So, Doug, why don't why don't you get started by giving our listeners an overview of um, of what you're up to right now, and then we'll go back in time and talk a little bit about your poop to gold journey. Sure. Uh, yeah. Right now, I mean, there's great opportunity. I think there's never been better opportunity in the history of the world to launch a business, even in spite of you know the health and pandemic issues that people are dealing with. So the internet's kind of brought down the the, um, the barrier to entry for entrepreneurs to start their journey. Um, I primarily work with companies that are raising money, venture capital companies. They approach me to look at their marketing. Um, sometimes I'll help them raise capital. And then if they do fund the company, they will then engage me to make sure that their investment um, has an ROI by ensuring that the products uh, that they you know produce are sold. Awesome. And tell us about the podcast. I started a podcast a couple of years ago uh, just because I, my goal to monetize my podcast was really simple. I wanted to get access to the smartest people in the marketing and SaaS world. And I figured one way to do that would be to be the media. And so that's my monetization strategy is find really smart people, have them on my show. And it's a long form interview to see how they behave um, and see, are they a company that I want to do business with that I'd recommend and that I'd partner with. So I use it more as a tool for shopping and identifying the best people in the industry um, moreover than trying to sell people stuff. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how having a platform um, gives you the leverage to, to get conversations with really smart people. Yeah. And you get start with the, you talk to the CEO or the founder, not necessarily the sales guy. That's right. Yep. Love it. So uh, for our listeners, you know, entrepreneurs and marketers, it, it, is your podcast something that would be of interest to them? Um, I think so, because I, I try to get a really wide variety of uh, guests on the show. So we cover all the stuff that would do with traditional marketing, um, social media, all the new age stuff, uh, AI, and I'm really trying to pull out information from the guests to um, to share with the, our listeners so they have a takeaway. You know, not everybody's got a, a huge budget. Some people have a budget. Some people have a big budget. Some people have no budget. So there needs to be something that's executable. Um, and so we try to, you know, we don't skew in any one way. I tell people that I'm tactic agnostic. So I focus on strategy. So the best thing I can do to serve them is to get as many different people on. And, you know, like yourself, I have as many marketing companies on as possible because they have a different point of view. Somebody might resonate with my listeners, you know, um, so I'm not using it to necessarily drive direct revenue for my listeners. Um, but I want to make sure they have an opportunity to grow their business. Love it. Um, talk to us about your, you, you know, go to the 35,000 foot viewpoint and talk to us at a very high level what the uh, strategic approach is that you like to take when, you know, you engage with one of these companies. So they just got investment dollars from, uh, you know, from a VC firm and, and then now they have those investment dollars, they're ready to go to work with them and the VC firm says, hey, you guys need to work with Doug because Doug's going to give you some guidance. At a very high level, tell us what you do with them. Basically, just assess where they are, who they are in the marketplace, uh, who their competitors are, exactly who their potential clients are, and then find the shortest path to go to reach the client and convert them into a, a paying customer. So, and I'll use, you know, I'll tell people any tactic possible. So <clears throat> my general kind of ha-ha moment is I tell people, I identify your target audience. I get a really big stick. I whittle down one end. I go find your target uh, customer, beat them over the head, pick them upside down by the pant leg, shake them upside down until their money falls out. And if you like that approach, then we'll work well together. together. <laughs> 
Now, you, you're in Canada, right? That's true. That was like the most violent thing I've ever heard a Canadian say. So, so <laughs> should I do the, I next, do the Canadian next Canadian thing? thing? Should I apologize? Say, I apologize, say, say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Love it. Okay, Doug, um, let's take a look at your poop to gold journey. So every successful person have had that moment or those moments where things get really bad and really dark. What was yep. yours? Um, no, I've had a, a number of them, so, um, but I'll try to cover them off quickly. I mean, I think one was when I was busy building my business and I came home. Uh, we've got three kids now and we're in the grandkids, but my son was probably five or six and I walked in the door and my son said, hey, mom, look, dad came home to visit. <laughs> And I went, I'm just doing what my grandfather's doing. I'm working, you know, six days a week, uh, 12, 14 hours a day. Um, This is a bad idea. So that was a big aha moment for me. That was kind of a, you know, kind of made my heart sink. Yeah, I I chuckle there, but it's a it's a chuckle of empathy. Um, It's one of those things where, man, it's so hard to balance, you know, the 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 various responsibilities that we have. Yeah. And then uh, the, beyond that, I mean, I think it was just really the struggles of, of growing, a, growing a small business. So adding an employee at home, moving out to a small office, adding staff, moving to a bigger office, adding more staff, and just the challenges and struggles that come with that and, and not necessarily having people who have gone before you or having a, a, a group of friends or a, 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 you know, a mastermind or a coach to walk you through what those struggles are going to be. Um, let's go back to that. uh, Let's go back to that moment. Um, so, you know, your son says, look, dad, or or dad came home to visit. Yeah. yeah. Um, what does that feel like in in that moment? Like, what are the emotions that you feel? I feel that I'm a bad dad, that I'm letting down my family and I was doing exactly what I didn't want to do. I mean, I grew up in a, in a home where my dad worked as a laborer. My mom was an at home mom. My grandfather was a very successful entrepreneur had retired at 35 had come back into the workplace and started several companies had put several mines into production, but had no relationship with family at all. And I remember saying, Hey, I, I'm not going to do that. And then, so for me, it was a realization that that's exactly what I was doing. So what was the pivot? The pivot was, um, I'm going to change my hours. I'm going to set parameters around when I work because I had a home office as well. Um, and we're going to start uh, spending more time with the family. So it wasn't, uh, people talk about work-life balance. I don't know that balance works as an entrepreneur. So I think that the problem is that we try to balance. Um, so the, the pivot there was work-life integration. So, you know, um, you know, I went to every football game, every rugby game, every dance recital, uh, all three of our kids danced, uh, you know, so we spent a lot of time traveling to sports and, 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 and the arts but I was at every event. So did I take phone calls on the sidelines? Sometimes? Yes. Did I have my back then my Blackberry and respond to emails? Yes. But I was there for every single event regardless. So I would go there. I made the decision that family first. So I would turn down client meetings to make sure that I was there. So there was, you know, it was firm in my calendar that I was going to be there regardless. Okay. Now talk to us about what, what the, the results of that have been. Uh, We've got a great relationship with our three growing kids. We've got grandkids. My grandson now, who's turning four next week, uh, about the same age that my son recognized that dad wasn't home. Um, They were over visiting last week and they said, hey, um, grandma, can we have a, can I have a sleepover? So I said to my wife, I said, why does my grandson want to have a sleepover at our place? Like I never had that relationship with my grandfather. She, she goes, cause he likes hanging out with you. So that's the, that's the fast forward. Um, it was worth, it was worth the investment. And, you know, I actually closed a really big project as a result of that. A client said, Hey, this is what I want. This is what I expect. I said, just so you know, don't phone me in the evenings or weekends. And I went, well, why? I said, cause family time. And at the end, uh, when I had a private conversation, uh, the, one of the, the women that was in the room said, that was, um, that was a key point in us hiring you that you have some boundaries. Um, so it wasn't a negative. So sometimes, you, you know, as I can't speak for all men, but you think, hey, well, I'm available all the time. I can do everything. Um, you know, that showed that, you know, um, I had some priorities in my life and that made the difference between winning the contract and not. That's awesome. Early in my career, I, I um, was a consultant at Deloitte and there the culture is very much one of those you know, kind of always on, um, always available type cultures. And the expectation is kind of that, you know, the company owns you, you know, Um, and, and, you know, consultants just kind of go in expecting to, you know, work 80 hour weeks and everything. 
And um, it was interesting because I was at a different phase of life than most of my colleagues around me. You know, most of my colleagues around me were uh, were still single and they were okay with, you know, the idea that the company, you know, quote unquote, owned them for a while. But I was starting my family out. You know, I had um, two, two young kids. And so I had to approach it differently. And I remember making a conscious decision that, you know, I couldn't let my experience at, at Deloitte get in the way of me fulfilling my duties as a husband and father. And so I had several conversations with, you know, managers and, you know, the, the partners in the firm who were above me where, you know, they would say, I need this done or I expect, you know, you, know, you to be at this event or whatever. And I would have to say, look, I'm not going to be able to do that because I need to be with my family for this or this or this. And I was amazed at how little pushback I got. It, you know, pretty much everyone actually really respected the fact that I was willing to take a stand and 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 be there for my family and that was kind of surprising because it goes against you know conventional wisdom of what you're supposed to do as a consultant yeah well that's cool i mean but i also found that you know i could work so when we tra- so we started traveling with the kids as the kids got older um because my health i was you know developing the habits of the entrepreneur the type a the higher blood pressure uh not great health so my doctor said you know take more time off so we'd travel you know 12 weeks out of the year um, six weeks in Europe, a couple weeks here, a couple weeks there. And people say, but did you work? I said, sure, I did. I get up six o'clock. I'll work till eight o'clock. My wife and I'll go to the gym. We'll come back, kick our kids out of bed. Um, and then we'll go have brunch. So, you know, that's what I mean by the integration. It, it wasn't an all or nothing. You just can't leave. Or at that point, I couldn't just leave my company and, and not talk to anybody for six weeks. Right. It doesn't have to be either or. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, would you rather be checking your email in your office um, or would you rather be checking your email, you know, sitting in a, a cabana in Bora Bora? Well, you know, um, Bora Bora is much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um what a, you know if you had to if you had to give two pieces of advice to you know to new entrepreneurs and marketers what would those two pieces of advice be never ask anyone for advice who hasn't done what you want to do or isn't willing to pay the price that you're going to have to pay so advice is cheap if you haven't done it i don't want to talk to you um and then be prepared to change your team uh, one of the major um, um, challenges that we had was that we outgrew our um, accountant and we outgrew our lawyer. So you go to your accountant and, you know, the goal, if you read all the Internet gurus is, hey, get to six figures. <clears throat> so you get to six figures and then, OK, fine. Now you, have, now you have a few staff. Now get to seven figures. OK, great. So at that point, you go to your accountant and say, hey, you know, our revenues are way up. Um, then you get to eight figures and then he goes, hey, you got a huge problem. Um, so, you know, you're going to outgrow some of your team. Some of your team's going to come with you. They can, they can grow and some aren't, but your key guys, like your lawyer and your accountant, um, they're probably not going to grow with you. If you started with somebody that's a small home-based business and they're a small law firm, um, you know, you're going to need, you know, offshore structures. You're going to need tax lawyers, not just a regular corporate lawyer. And there was really nobody that, that guided us through that. So when you change um, classes, if you will, in society, the classes that people put you in the boxes, <clears throat> your whole world changes. You know, your bankers come to your house. You don't go to the bank anymore. Um, so there's a whole range of other privileges that you don't experience. So find someone who's been through that so you don't make the mistakes um, as you transition. So if your goal is to go six figures, seven figures, eight figures, nine figures, whatever your goals are, find someone who's been there um, and see if you can work with them as a mentor. That's sage advice. I love it. How can our listeners stay in touch with you, Doug? Uh, best way to connect is really the, just through my website. I've put together some resources for your listeners um, that they can uh, get access to. So it's just my website. It's dougmorneau.com uh, forward slash poop to gold. And um, do you want to you you spell Morneau? Sure. M-O-R-N-E-A-U. That was dougmorneau.com forward slash poop to gold. Yeah. And so I've got a couple of resources there. One, I've got a worksheet that I use to help um, entrepreneurs and business owners figure out where they should spend their advertising. So it's a little bit different take on the customer avatar. It walks people through your, your customer's entire day. So when do they get up? What do they eat? What podcasts they listen to? Do they commute to work? What do they do on the commute to work? So you want to have a global view that helps them to, to get a, you know, make better informed decisions on where to spend their advertising. Um, I also publish a book. I'll give them a free copy of the book. So that's the book you can buy it on Amazon. It's called three big lies. Um, uh, how, I, you know, how I generated, uh, you know, millions of dollars using email. 
Um, so you can buy it on Amazon or you can uh, just pay for the shipping, pay the, uh, the seven ninety five or eight ninety five. I'm not sure how much the shipping is on that. Um, and I'll send you a copy. Awesome. I'm excited yeah. to read that myself. Cool. Thank you for coming on the show, Doug. It's been a pleasure to get to know you and appreciate you sharing your wisdom with our listeners. Hey, thanks so much. I had a great time. Okay. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. As entrepreneurs and small businesses, we all kind of reach that point where we know we've created something awesome and we want to share it with the world, right? Mm -hmm. And it's that very next step that can oftentimes be really intimidating or really scary or you just don't know where to go next, right? And the beautiful thing about this 14-day script challenge is you get your hand held from, okay, you have this cool product, now let's go research and find the exact way to present it and message it to the world in a way that resonates and gets people excited and they're ready to swipe their credit card and purchase. And in the 14 day script challenge, you get the opportunity to go through that step by step with our writers who have done it dozens and dozens of times. You actually watch us go through each of the steps ourselves and create it with a real client, a real product, and um, it's a real campaign that's out there that's been very successful. That's right. And the feedback that we've had on this thing has just been phenomenal. I mean, we get comment after comment and emails flowing in from people all over the world who have just uh, raved about the impact that this has had on their business. People tell us over and over again, it is just a huge value punch for the investment for this 14 day script challenge and, and really gave them the tool set they needed to walk through it and make it happen. And we've had dozens of students who have successfully taken the challenge, written their script, launched their ad campaigns, and driven success for their business. It's pretty amazing. For more information, go to hbros.co slash script. That's hbros.co slash script.